You are tuned in to On Air with Chris Shanafel. Welcome back on air as we continue our player spotlight series with the 2020 NFL draft class. I'm your host, Chris Shanfell, and I'm now joined by Madre Harper, defensive back out of Southern Illinois by way of Oklahoma State. Uh, Madre, really appreciate you taking some time this evening. Uh, can you believe that your collegiate career has officially come to an end and now here you are preparing for a professional football career? I mean, it's really bittersweet. Like, Obviously, I love playing college football and, you know, me going to Oklahoma State and SIU getting to meet, you know, a group of, you know, make really good friends and teammates and, you know, people that I know from my life. At the same time, you know, I've been preparing for this since five years old. I mean, this has always been a dream of mine, always working hard, always putting in that extra work. So to see everything come full circle and not necessarily like saying that, like, I've made it because I feel like I still have work to be done, even if when you get in the NFL, but just to see that my dreams are coming true and that I'm just blessed to have this opportunity to, you know, be considered at the next level. And I want to take you back coming out of Lamar High School in Texas, Madre. You're one of the top defensive backs in the state. Obviously, we know how big uh, high school football is in the state of Texas. So to, to be one of the top players in this in that state specifically, um, you know, that, that says a lot about you and, and the type of player you were dating back to your high school days. Um, you had offers from programs such as Oklahoma, Iowa, Pitt, and you would decide to attend Oklahoma State. What was that recruiting process like for you, and why did you ultimately go with uh, OSU? Uh, the recruiting process, it, it was well at first, honestly, like just, you know, coming up through high school, just putting in a lot of work, always working out, doing everything, playing all sports, and then. Uh, I don't know, I went to, like, one camp at LSU, did really well, and after that, the offers just started, like, rolling in. And once scouts and, you know, coaches came in and just started seeing, like, my size and, you know, my speed and how I move and the, the physicality I am as a player, the offers just started rolling in. And it was a very great process. Like, I enjoyed everything about it. I mean, I hope that every kid gets to go through that process, where it, whether it's a Power 5, FCS, or it doesn't really matter, just the opportunity and being blessed to play at the collegiate level is a blessing in its own. I ultimately chose Oklahoma State just because of who they had there at the time with the coaching staff and everything, and then them, you know, allowing me to graduate high school early and getting a chance to get out there my freshman year. I need a great organization and fan base. I mean, we come out there, we felt really loved, and the fan base is incredible. I mean, like, they, they really do love the players, and they truly love the school of Oklahoma State. So it kind of made my decision easy. I, you know, I prayed about it and agreed with my family, and that was the best place for me to go to for my career to extend it. And you would go on, you would spend uh, two years at Oklahoma State. It seemed like things were going well. You were uh, well on your way to being the team's uh, starting cornerback um, until you were abruptly dismissed. If you don't mind me asking, what led to your dismissal from OSU and how did Southern Illinois pop up on your radar? Uh, with the dismissal, just some things that I should have handled a little better. It had nothing to do with, like, no drugs, nothing like that. I don't do nothing like that, but just some things internally with the team and coaching and they felt like it was just best if we moved on from each other and it's all love i have no you know ill words about them or nothing like that and obviously i wish i could have stayed and i didn't want to go out like that like you said i was on my way to be the starter but that's on me i learned from that and i grew up as a person and as a man i was young 18 19 i need to do handle different things differently and i wish they didn't like that but that's the way the lord said that my path had to go how i got to siu was my best friend out of high school bryce notary actually went there and I was looking at, you know, back then we didn't have the rules with uh, play for games and red shirt. So my red shirt, I did play games. So my red shirt was up, and I didn't want to sit out a year just based on that. So hitting him up and figuring out the rules with the whole D1 AA level and he telling his coach about me, and that's kind of how that went. And obviously going somewhere where I knew somebody, it was a really good friend from high school, the opportunity to play right away. So that was kind of ultimately who made my decision. And obviously being in a strong conference, I mean, Carson was in my conference, Missouri Valley, very strong conference and I feel like I had good talent there so that would also help me on my you know level going to the next level well you, you brought it up and, and let's go ahead and talk right about it I mean coming from the, an FBS conference uh you know Oklahoma State playing in the Big 12 what was it like to play in what I would call the most competitive conference in the FCS um honestly one of the most competitive conferences in all of football at, at any level in my opinion in the Missouri Valley uh, what was that like for you, Madre? I mean, especially coming from where you're already um, playing at a very high level. Now you transfer. Um, you know, they, they say you, you, you go down a level. But, I mean, talk about the overall um, 
co- competition that, that you played week in and week out the past couple of years in the Missouri Valley? I mean, I still feel like it's great competition. Obviously, you may not have what they so-called like five stars or four stars, but to me, stars mean nothing. There's still great players there. A lot of players with a lot of grit. They may have, like, sometimes have, like, a side different. Obviously, you know, the average line for, like, a power five school may, you know, be over 6'4", 6'5", 300-some pounds. But they're a great player in the Missouri Valley Conference and definitely give a lot of competition. The difference between that and the Big 12, the biggest I've seen is that the Big 12 does run the football, but a lot of people do run that spread offense. Obviously, you know, me seeing quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield run that type of spread offense and quarterbacks that can move on the go. To Missouri Valley, a lot of people are doing like the Maryland Eye or they're doing like, you know, like two back sets. We're having a lot of run game, a lot of pop So I was forced to tackle a lot, but I'm a physical corner. I like to tackle. And that was kind of the main difference I've seen. Teams still throw the ball, but a lot of teams want to establish that hard run nose game. You want to run down your throat and establish that they're going to be tougher than you. And that was kind of like the biggest differences that I've seen from coming from the Big 12 to uh, SIU. And coming from the Big 12 to to the Missouri Valley, you would have an immediate impact on the Saluki's defense. This past season as a senior, you started 10 of 11 games. You posted 42 tackles, a team-high 12 uh, pass breakups, and two interceptions. Uh, For you, how would you grade your performance throughout your senior season? Um, It was decent. I mean, like, I'm pretty hard on myself, so, like, I want to, you know, I want to be obviously be the best. So, I mean, it, it was okay. I feel like I could have made some more plays. I, I was my goal was to get three or more picks, so I didn't quite reach that. But that was kind of on me not focusing on some plays, drop some opportunities that I had. But I mean, I feel like I had a solid senior year. But obviously, there's always room for improvement on technique, ball skills, and, and tackling. Everything else is improvement. But it was a pretty solid senior year, and I'm grateful to you know go out with the winning season, help raise that program back up. And, and you know, teammates aside. Madre, who do you think is the best player you've played against over the years? Uh, is there any one specific that stands out? You can go back to your freshman or sophomore days at Oklahoma State or the past two years at SIU. I know you already dropped the names like a, a Baker Mayfield and a Patrick Mahomes. It doesn't get too much uh, better, too much yeah. bigger than that. Um, you know, Is there a name that, that really sticks out to you when, when looking back? I mean, James Washington, man. He is a dog, and he's going to do great things for the Steelers. I mean, that man is a workhorse, really great guy, country boy for real. I mean, I mean, he's always solid to me. And, I mean, just seeing him in practice, just running and jumping, like, I mean, he, that's a real tough dude right there, for real, for real. And, yeah, playing with somebody like that, and obviously, like, my own teammate playing with, like, Chen, I feel like Chen, Chen should have been at a, a power five, honestly, like, how he's coming to the light and all the blessings that he's receiving because he really worked for that. That's another player right there. That you know, those two right there, some great players I played with. Yeah, and I know uh, back in 2018, uh, you guys uh, traveled and went to Ole Miss. Uh, what was it like playing and covering um, some top-notch receivers such as a DK Metcalf and AJ Brown? I mean, uh, two guys that would go on and have stellar rookie seasons in the NFL. Right. I mean, it felt like home for me. I mean, that's the type of competition that I've trained for and look forward to, and obviously want to. At Oklahoma State, had my career, you know, going against, but it felt like home to me. It felt, it felt just like back in the old days, going against Oklahoma State, going against people and being in front of sixty thousand fans. I mean, it's no different to me. I don't care if I have like hundred fans, fifty fans, doesn't matter. Like I have a job to do, and I train for everybody. Like no situation is too big, no receiver is too strong, too fast. I feel like I'm with anybody in the country, so it just felt like another game to me. But obviously, I do have respect for opponents and those I mean it was obviously great to see those guys and compete against those guys and know that I can't play on that level and obviously like you said they had great careers and I have a ton of respect for those guys but I mean it felt like just not the game to me I mean that no that's too big for me honestly based off where I come from and just you know being in the Texas football system that, that right there is probably the answer of the draft season so far uh, out of the interviews that I've uh, recorded. I mean, uh, f- it felt like home to you. I absolutely love it. I'm sure anybody listening to this will love that answer as well. And, um, you know, one of your teammates, you mentioned him already, Jeremy Chin. Uh, he's had a lot of buzz circulating around his name, rightfully so. You said that he has the talent to play at one of these Power 5 schools. Um, me, personally, I think there's a great chance that he hears his name called uh, in the second round, no later in the third round of the NFL draft. What has it been like uh, playing in the same secondary as Chin these past two years? Um, it's been great just you know having a safety that you can count on. Obviously, as a corner, like 
sometimes that might be hard to get, but just knowing that he's a solid player, he works hard, and he studies the game. And I know that I can count on him day in and day out to make plays, and he's going to do great, and I know he's going to test well, and his name's going to get called for sure. Again, we're chatting with 2020 NFL draft prospect, defensive back out of Southern Illinois by way of Oklahoma State, Madre Harper. And uh, when did it hit you that you uh, that, that a professional football career could be an achievable goal? Um, I know you said in the opening this is something that you've been preparing for. This is something that you've been itching for since you're uh, about five years old. Um, so it's, I'm sure it's always been a dream, Madre. But when did you decide that you were going to uh, actually pursue this as a career path? I mean, since high school, this was this was this was always the goal. I mean, since I mean, to me, I never looked past the next day. So growing up playing, you know, little league football, that's what I'm playing little league football. Then I conquered junior high, and then I conquered junior high, and I got to high school. Okay, I'm in high school, conquer high school, so I can get to college. Get to college, I have a solid career, so I can get to like it's always been a part of the plan. It's always been. I mean, I have. You know, people make, like, goals every year. Like, that has been on my goal list since I can remember. I mean, I've been praying for this for who knows how long. Me and my parents, and like, this has always just been the plans. Like, I don't know. I've never thought about anything else. Obviously, like, I have a degree. I did graduate, and I can't do other things. But this is how I've been training. I mean, I've been training with, you know, Clay Mack and all these B people in DFW for this long. You can ask anybody. Like, I mean, my mentor, Mike Hawkins, he had got drafted to the Green Bay Packers. I've been training with him since eighth grade. You can call them and ask them, like, this is what – I always knew I could play. So it was never like, you know, when is this going to be my career? I always knew it was going to happen. I just had some bumps in the road. But I know that, to me, I'm a draftable prospect and I have something to prove. And then I feel like, you know, Scott's going to get somebody that is really ready to work. Again, we're chatting with, uh, in my opinion, one of the more underrated prospects in the 2020 NFL Draft, Madre Harper, cornerback out of Southern Illinois. And, uh, Madre, I know scouts have been in and out of Carbondale. Um, Who are some teams that you met with uh, throughout the past couple of years? I know scouts have been going in there uh, year in and year out. Uh, How how do you feel that they're viewing you as a prospect? What's some of the feedback that you've uh, uh, gotten? Uh, Well, for one, just my size, because obviously you don't have a lot of 6'2" corners walking around just you know out there obviously with good hips and good feet and they're also just just liking how you know my my level level with my hips the size i can run you know be able to be a man press corner playing special teams i love special teams so obviously I, any team i go to i want to be best friends with special teams coach because i mean i just love space special teams honestly and then stuff like that i mean i really like just you know how i get into work and physicality and i like to tackle you know, I want to tackle. I feel like it's important for a corner, especially in these days, the way the game's going, and the different stuff like that. And the teams, they've been coming in and out, and I've been, you know, chatting with them and, you know, just getting a feel for me. But obviously, you know, they're going to keep looking at the film and everything like that, and you know, hopefully I have some to show that give me opportunity. Yeah, and, you know, one thing that really stands out, uh, you know, not you know, away from your size, like you said, 6'2", 190, watching the tape, I mean, that right away stands out, but the physicality you bring to the cornerback position is something that, um, you know, it, it seems like that's kind of going away um, when looking at a lot of these cornerbacks. That's certainly not the case for you, and, and to hear, um, you know, how passionate you are about special teams as well, I'm sure will um, really open up some teams' eyes. The pro day will certainly be a big opportunity for you. Uh, Southern Illinois has a nice crop of pro prospects coming out this year with yourself, Chin. Tight end Kilby, running back uh, DJ Davis. Um, where are you training uh, at up until then? Uh, I'm training at APEC in Fort Worth. So it's obviously it's where Pat Mahomes trains too. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, so I'll be training there, and they can get me right. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna. I mean, obviously I've been praying for this moment, just praying that I test well. But based off what we doing in pre tests, I'm, I'm gonna test crazy, and I'm opening up a lot of a lot of scout eyes. When they see these numbers, it, you know, it's gonna it's gonna make it's gonna make them go crazy for sure. You want to go on record with any of the numbers that you uh, that, that you have? Uh, nah, in you know, mind you know, I can't do that. <laughs> nah, you know, I can't do that. I got to keep that a secret. But it, it, it's going to be a good show. I'm doing my pro day at uh, Northwestern as well at March 10th, so I'll be up there as well. All right, I will. Uh, I will be in attendance for that Northwestern pro day. So I look forward to seeing you uh, blow Definitely. away these teams. I'm good. So, Madre, I know yeah. that you have a, a track and field background dating back to your high school days. Um, D- does that help you out when preparing for this process? I mean, most definitely. Just the being the ability to be able to have good form. And obviously I'm not saying I have the best form. I'm not saying I have Olympic form. But I do know how to run 
And, I mean, I've always been pretty fast. So, obviously, that helping me preparing for my 40 with the starts and explosion and, you know, the proper techniques. You know, with the arm swipes and the angles you're hitting, that's really big with Bobby's teaching with angles and getting out and maximizing my length. So I cover the most amount of distance as fast as possible so we're not wasting any time, any steps. And yeah, my track background definitely helps, and, you know, that's all that's, all that's going well. A couple more questions from Adre Harper, 2020 NFL Draft Prospect cornerback out of Southern Illinois. Really appreciate your time, Madre. Uh, for those not familiar with your game, how would you describe it? What are you, what would you say are some of the strengths that you bring to the defensive backfield? Well, for one, uh, intelligence. I mean, I feel like I prepare well, so I try to have a high football IQ, knowing my opponent and studying the film, coming with good feet, being a longer guy. You know, I'm tall. I do have to focus more on my feet, my technique. But I also feel like with my long arm, I am able to get more hands on the receiver, disrupt more plays and be able to just, you know, I want to just take away a whole side of the field. And then with my speed, I feel like I can cover with the best of them. And being able to tackle, I feel like the big things, to be able to cover and tackle, I feel like that's a great combination for a corner. And then I ain't even weighing 190 anymore. I'm at 197 right now, so I'm putting on a little bit more size so that even if I needed to, I could play safety. If it needed be, I could play outside, you know, just trying to be a versatile player. You know, I'd be lying if I didn't say your your game and obviously your profile screams Seattle Seahawks to me. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, one of the first names, I mean, like like a Richard Sherman type. I mean, uh, is sure. there a player that you like to watch or try to model your game after? Uh, you named it, Richard Sherman. <laughs> That's my favorite play. He's been my player for, for a long time just based on my friend. Like, to me, like, I like watching guys that are my size because, I, I mean, obviously, as you know, a corner my size is going to move different than a corner that's 5'10". Not saying they both can't cover well, but we're just going to move different because of our limbs and our, you know, other abilities that we have. He might do things better than I can at my size, and I can do different things that he can't. So I like to watch corners like Richard Sherman, David Rose, and David Ramsey, and I like players with attitude and who, who feel like they can line up against the best because I feel like as a corner you have to have that mentality that you can line up with the best regardless if you get beat, give up a pass, to keep coming back and keep battling all game. I feel like that's a very important aspect of playing this position. You have to have a short-term memory and you have to be able out there and give it your best because with us, I make a mistake, that's six. Nobody's going to see anything else. So I have to be on, my, on point at all times. Yeah, as you said, you have to have a, a, a short memory. Whether it's a good play or bad play, you got to move on to the next play. Um, which wide receiver are you looking forward to lining up uh, against most at the next level, man? At the um, – which receiver? Ooh. <laughs> ah, that's a hard one, man. Never been that fast. I mean, obviously, I want to see them all, honestly. like I feel like everything, all of them offer different things, but – who who really been going crazy? Who I really want a chance to guard? Andre Hopkins. I mean, he's just going stupid with the routes and the catching. I just want to, I just want to line up against him and see how that goes. I mean, even even a DK Mack have a, a you know big receiver, anything. It could be anybody. But yeah, those two right there, like D Hop been going crazy. So I definitely want to get the opportunity. I mean, respect the game a hundred percent. Like I watch him. Like I watch receivers like him to see what are the new releases, what are they doing, how are they attack the DBs weapons now. Because every year it's something new. And I feel like they're, you know, he's one of the best at in the league, so he's definitely doing some, some great. Yeah, no doubt about it. And um, final question for you: Let's say we have all 32 NFL general managers. They're listening to this very interview. Why should they want the cornerback, the defensive back out of Southern Illinois, by way of Oklahoma State, Madre Harper, a part of their team? Because I'm gonna bring something to the team, that energy that's gonna energize the team, and that I'll be somebody that will represent the organization well with class and. You won't have any off the field issues like that. You're going to get everything out of me. You're going to get 200% out of me. This is what I want to do. This is what I've always wanted to do. And I'm going to give effort with whatever it takes. Like, I'll, I mean, I'll hold kicks if that's what it takes. I'll, you know, I'll do anything really just to be a part of my position and then a player that really wants to be there. Hey, that's that's all that's all they need to hear. That's all they need to know. Uh, Madre, really appreciate you taking some time tonight. Really enjoyed this conversation. And, uh, Congrats on all the success and uh, certainly wishing you the best leading up to that Northwestern Pro Day. I look forward to seeing you there, and uh, I look forward to seeing you put on a show. For sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to open up a lot of eyes. and hey, hey, it, it just, I just can't wait. I'm excited. You, you're going to see it. It's going to be crazy.